So Alice, we've been talking to quite a few people here at the Festival Work and one of the topics that come up obviously with the people management is recruitment. We've talked to a few recruiters we actually. Have, yeah. Um, and we were talking to them about onboarding and their experience and how that makes things better or harder. Uh, so I thought we could talk now about pre-boarding. Yeah, that's important actually. Cause a lot of conversations we've had was about the onboarding experience. But then it's important the pre-boarding because to me, apart from when they first see the job advert and go through the um, application process, pre-boarding is a really important step for first impressions of the company. And the impression I got from talking to people is that actually these, this is something that's far less considered than the onboarding process. Yeah. People may have less of an understanding of it or less the understanding of how damaging it can be for those initial perceptions if your pre-boarding isn't right. Definitely. So, well, what is pre-boarding, or what's the purpose of pre-boarding, right? So, we've uh, we've recently written about it, right, at MHR. Uh, so, every interaction informs someone's opinion of a company. Okay. So, from now, um, so how you promptly respond to something, or like how you address, or how you appear physically, or how the brand looks, these have an impact, right? Okay. Pre-boarding is just as important, right? Because actually, if you weigh all your experience for that employee on their first day. You yep. don't realise that their interactions with them ahead of them starting or during the recruitment process are sloppy. They're going to start developing poor perceptions of an organisation. And actually, you may find that they don't actually start the onboarding process because they go elsewhere because they're put off by those initial interactions. Yeah, and there must be some important steps with pre-boarding. Yeah. What needs to be covered and what should be considered. Yeah. But also, um, what kind of comes to mind as well is if you have a onboarding portal, yeah. pre-onboarding, there's going to be steps that you need to do before you even open up the onboarding portal. Absolutely. And it's going to yeah. really help the whole process yeah. feel a lot more seamless. Um, and ultimately, I think for the employee experience, yeah. um, it's going to be a lot better for them right mm -hmm. from the start. Absolutely. Well, so, well, so pre-boarding and onboarding go hand in hand, right? But um, there are some key differences. Pre-boarding is about what happens before the candidate arrives. Onboarding is what they start to do. On, so that's day they one, is it? Yeah, it's the kind right. of day one onwards. Getting them used to how they work. But it doesn't happen before, right? Right. Um, so why is it important? Well, did you know, we've got a stat for you 80% of new hires who receive poor communications and a poor experience ahead of work will make plans to quit. Right. As a, as a as high, a amount, high amount, right? Yeah. So imagine spending your first day sitting around and waiting for all the paperwork or feeling like the company didn't have it together because you're actually spending the first day with a load of admin or awkward tasks where you can't yeah. really get online, you can't start learning, you can't engage yeah. with people. That sets a negative experience. You start going, do they really plan for me here? Do I feel yeah. valued? Are, this, are these people got it together? Yeah. I was going to say, what's funny is everyone gets those um, pre first day nerves mm. and you know you build up the same like, I've got to meet everyone and I hope I make a good first impression but actually your first day or two or week is admin work which yeah. that's not the best use of time for a business is it you're no. already investing in that person and yeah. um, ultimately the day one should be day one of the job and it puts pressure on the employee as well. There's so many new starters that feel like, oh, I want to make a difference. I want to get going. I want to run. And yeah. they're like, ah, oh, I just feel like I'm wading through loads of processes that are actually making me wonder well, how this company really wants to work if they haven't got this sick. We've been doing it for years. Why, aren't, why isn't this an easier experience? So, yeah. So there are some best practices, which is where I thought I'd come on to. Perfect. We've been writing about it. And we talk about it a lot at MHR. We want to make sure that the employee experience is as slick as possible. So yeah. um, we've recommended some take you through if you like yeah so um obviously the nuances of pre the pre-boarding process heavily depend on your organization right it's going to depend on who you are and what you do and the, the size of it and what industry you're in but there are some kind of near universal expectations you can set and best practices you can do to develop a good starting strategy okay. so first one is stay in touch sounds simple right yeah or just Communicate, communicate, communicate. Okay. Make sure that person feels comforted by the fact that you're out there, you're available to talk to, if you've got any worries or concerns ahead of them starting, but also you're really helping communicate the expectations of their first day and yeah. making them feel confident about their work. Yeah. yeah. And when we talk about communication, um, I would hope that there's an expectation that if you're reaching out to the to that employee um, or soon to be new starter that you are hearing back from them because there's exactly. no point if you're sending things yeah. out and it's in their junk yeah. mail or you know sat in their letterbox no. somewhere and you want to make sure that you are hearing back because then there's an open there's yeah. an open communication between yeah. the two and I think it sets a really nice tone for where you want that relationship to carry through on their first day and into their career exactly. second one manage paperwork a lot of the first bit is like, oh, have you got your passport? Have you got your right uh, to yeah, work? Are you going to do all this? We've got to scan it in. We've got to put a photocopy here. Then we're going to send it to this team. Then we're going to walk into that room. And then we know you can walk. And then we, and whatever. 
Yeah. But um, yeah, HR and payroll teams should be ready to manage those essential documents okay. very quickly. So e-signatures can make life a lot easier. Yep. Digitalize your process is, is key. Yeah. So if you're using a HR tech platform that allows you to capture information, send teams wirelessly, digitally, and, and in a connected way, you're mm -hmm. saving time for that employee on the first day but you're also making sure that they've got expectations of what to bring and speed up the process. Yeah, that makes sense. I think yeah. another key thing as well is if you are double keying in information, mm. your HR software needs to be changed. And what, yeah, and yeah, only that one should... bit of that needs to be wrong for it to just not work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's a very. I think it's probably a very tedious part of the whole onboarding process mm. you know, for kind of you know the HR team. But at the same time, you kind of mentioned it there if you, they can scan in their documents then it completely cuts out the middleman it completely cuts out how the employee having to pick up or take certain documents in i think it also can probably mean it's a lot more secure yeah absolutely third one find mentors so even if you know you have someone in a field that's not in the same kind of area that you know, the person's yeah. working in it is incredibly daunting prospect joining a new company Having okay. a friendly face, someone who can go, look, I've been here, I know how this works, don't worry. There, you might feel daunted by asking your manager this question, but there are no silly questions. You can talk to me about it. Yeah. It's a really encouraging way to make people feel welcome, but also give them someone who they can now socialise with in the yeah. workplace. Yeah, yeah. One thing um, which we do quite well, actually, is that our onboarding, we have a two-day induction, yeah. and everyone always says, the person that you meet on your first day is you always say hi to them in the coffee queue. You never forget their face, their name, what they do, because it is, it's, it's literally what who sticks with you, because it is the first face that you learn. And I just enjoy that, and sometimes in those inductions, if they're, they're really diverse in terms of, like, I, I meet loads of people from different teams. Actually, yes, my yeah, day job, I will never interact with that team, or maybe I will, yeah. but it'll be really limited. But I now know more about it. And actually, for the next so many years, however I work here, I might not interact, I might forget that, but that that induction has given me the opportunity to learn more about how the business works. Yeah, I think as well having a mentor, um, if they're able to put a face and name before they even step into the office, I think yeah. it can help build the confidence and lessen the nerves for that new starter as well. Mm, so. um, another one is spelling out expectations. It sounds simple, but it's just making yeah. it really clear you know, what they can expect because uh, that gives people confidence that they're doing the right thing, they don't feel nervous and, and worried or even lonely on their first day. However, you, it's about trying not to overload them with too many details. Don't send them like a war and peace ahead. Right. They're not panicking, oh, do I need to print that off? Do I need to yeah. remember it? So kind of, very simply, this is what you can expect. This is what you can do. And now you know how you're going to spend your time. Yeah. It makes people feel Clear relaxed. and concise. Yeah, clear and concise. The other one, this is always one that gets me because maybe I feel primitive and all, but navigating IT. What does that mean? Well, how can you make sure you're set you don't want to spend your first day like, I'm going to get you up on your laptop and then you're going to get your phone and then you're going to have this and you're going to store that and all the apps that you want you to sign up. It's really boring. Yep. So you can really make the first day a lot smoother by pre-setting up accounts, registrations, licenses that you oh, need. Very, yeah, you would be a lot more efficient. All that stuff, tech, logged in. So actually, you're not spending half a day setting up. You're actually getting half a day getting used to things is, yeah, is, is yeah. a lot more. I think that's... But, that's quite a good one actually because the amount of time you probably spend yeah. setting up mm. rather than doing yeah. learning yeah. so it's such a wine to to wine time take waster there yeah. we go yeah and if <laughs> person waster. x is coming on day y why are you waiting till day y to then set the kit up for them? It should be there <laughs> yeah. to welcome them in so they can yeah. start working right yeah completely so yep um and then the other one i think this is really important which is the last one we've got on this list uh, is laying out learning opportunities because, and if you're in a really good like management process, so you've got a really good manager, from day one, they should be asking the question, how can we develop you? What can we do to invest in you to get you to grow and develop into this role, but also add more value into the organization for your own sake as well? So if you're able to lay out any potential areas for that person to highlight, you know, this is where I want to grow to or develop my own skills in, you can get that set up ahead of their arrival. And it helps give them a focus and, a, and some, some sets and yeah. goals as well. I think the impression it leaves as well is that the company is ready to invest. Yeah. Either it's not you're not just yeah. someone that's come in to fill a role. Yeah. You're not someone that's just a number in the whole organisation. Yeah. It means that the company is sending that message to the employee to say we want to invest in you. We want you to grow with us, yeah. um, and that your job's more than just your nine to five. Yeah. You know. We want you to become part of the company's growth. So, yeah, definitely an important one. And we've just talked about external learning there. Internal learning and development actually kind of lies in about how do you learn about the company? There yeah. are so many things that you can do when you get started. Like, oh, here's a link to a SharePoint. 
dive in or you can't do that before you start for like secure reasons but like here's our website here's yeah. our promotional material marketing have given us this this will really help enable you understand who we are get them lined up before they start otherwise they're going to spend all their time figuring out where to go you can have really nice useful packs ready for new employees that make them feel part of the culture and it's also your opportunity to get them embedded in the culture in the right way so brilliant. that's that's my last tip. Brilliant. So yeah. is that all in a guide? A we have a, there's a few blogs we have on our blogs. website. You can go into our knowledge hub, but there is a pre-boarding versus onboarding guide, uh, and it will take you through the definitions of it and some helpful tips. So I do recommend brilliant. anyone go on our website and look that up. That's us then. That is it. Pre-boarding, onboarding. Done. Done. Complete. Completed it. Ready for day one. We're on board. <laughs> We're on board. <laughs>